Section 2.8, homonuclear diatomic molecules. Let's look at hydrogen again. The one is orbital and this one is orbital. We form two MOs. One is sigma orbital, one is sigma star orbital. And this G stands for symmetrical, U is anti-symmetrical. And we put these two electrons in the lower energy orbital over here. And then this energy decrease plus this energy decrease is the bond energy of hydrogen 2. We can also deal with helium 2. So we have helium atom here and here. They both contribute a 1s atomic orbital. Two 1s orbitals can form again two amos. Via constructive infer interference, we have this sigma orbital. Destruct interference, we have sigma star. And this G is symmetrical, U is anti-symmetrical. This asterisk means it's an antibody orbital. Now we put these electrons in the lower energy orbital first. We put only two here. Due to the Pauli exclusion principle, we can only accommodate two electrons in this orbital. So we have to put the other two in here. Now look at the bond order first. The bond order is the number of bonding electrons minus the number of antibonding electrons, and then divided by two. So 2 minus 2, that's 0. 0 divided by 2, that's 0. There's no bond. And actually, it's impossible to find helium dimer in the real world. And also, if you notice this, this energy decrease is smaller than this energy increase. So by forming this sigma and sigma star, the helium 2 is less stable with higher energy than two separate helium atoms. Now let's look at some other... Uh, homonuclear diatomics, we need more orbitals. For lithium-2, we need 2s orbitals. For barium 2 again, we need 2s orbitals. For boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon, we need to look at the 2p orbitals as well. So first, let's look at the 2s orbitals. So if you have two lithium atoms, they can form a single bond because they both have one electron here, another electron here, right? And then when they form a sigma G and a sigma U, symmetrical, anti-symmetrical, you can put these two electrons here. And there's some energy decrease. So this energy decrease, this energy decrease together is the bond energy of lithium-2. How about beryllium? Beryllium has two electrons in the 2s orbital. So when you form this MO diagram, you need to put two electrons in here and two electrons in here as well. What's the bond order? It's 2 minus 2, 0. 0 divided by 2, that's 0. All right? Again, 0 divided by 2 is 0. So the bond order between the two beryllium atoms is 0. There's just no chemical bond. Now let's look at boron 2. When you have boron 2, you need to put one p electron in here, another p electron in here. So you have a total of six p orbitals in total in boron 2, but only two valence electrons. The six p orbitals may interact to form a sigma bonding orbital, sigma anti bonding orbital, two pi bonding orbitals, one pi, oh, I'm sorry, two, well, number two, okay, two pi uh, anti bonding orbitals. Uh, These numbers are just labels, you know, the first is sigma g, the second is sigma g, the second is sigma u. The first uh, pi orbital, you know, the first pi g orbital, so uh, those labels are referring to the same type of orbitals. And over here, actually, they neglected the interaction between the 1s orbitals, all right? Because they are core electrons, and although there are electrons in the 1s orbitals in lithium-2, they are not going to form a bond. They will do this. So that's why in lithium-2, beryllium-2, boron-2, carbon-2, nitrogen-2, we do not have to worry about the 1s electrons because they do not form any bonds anyway. They are chemically inert. Uh, chemists do not care about core electrons. We care about the valence electrons. So again, in lithium-2, we have only two valence electrons. They are here. In beryllium-2, two more electrons. We put them here. Well, in boron-2, we put two electrons in here, so there's a single bond. And then in carbon-2, well, we put two electrons in here, and then two electrons in here. 
And then we have a total of four bonding electrons to give us a bond order of two. So in carbon two, bond order is two. How about uh, nitrogen two? In nitrogen two, we have six valence electrons. We put the six valence electrons in here. We have a bond order of three. Now, what about oxygen two? You have to put two additional electrons in here. So now you have two anti bonding electrons. The bond order of oxygen two is only two, because you have six bonding electrons, two anti bonding electrons. Overall, you have six minus two, and then divided by two, that's a bond order of two. Okay, in the fluorine molecule, you have six bonding electrons and only four anti bonding electrons. Therefore, the bond order is one in fluorine two. Now let's look at some pictures. This is SS interaction, this is sigma bonding. This is SP in interaction, this is sigma bonding. This is PP interaction, this is sigma bonding because this is so-called head-to-head interaction. Now let's look at the shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder interaction. Okay, just imagine, you know, two persons standing and that's their shoulders. Well, that's their feet, you know, that's shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder interaction. So in a pi bond, although this pi bond is constructive interference, we still observe one nodal plane. It's a uh, planar nodal surface over here. So it's not due to the destructive interference because there's no destructive interference between these two. This is constructive interference. This is constructive interference. The reason you see one nodal plane here is because it's inherited from the original 2p atomic orbital. So in a just 2p orbital, you have such a nodal plane. You're just putting this nodal plane together over here. It's still one nodal plane for this p orbital and this p orbital. But again, this is constructive interference, green and green. This uh, constructive interference, it's blue and blue. And therefore, this is a bonding orbital. This is pi bonding orbital. All right, so now uh, we want to talk about the labels, you know, sigma G, sigma U, G is uh, Gerater in German, Wundgerater in German, G means uh, even function, symmetrical, U means odd function, anti-symmetrical. So anyway, how do we know it's a G or U? So first, you need to find the center of the molecule, it's here. And then you join arrow, and you look at the two ends of the arrow. If they have the same sign, it's a G. If they have opposite signs, that's a U. So now let's look at some pi orbitals. So this is pi U. That's a bonding orbital because this is constructive interference. This is constructive interference. And then we find the center, we join arrow. But look, now this time it's from negative to positive, the sign changes. So this is pi u, and pi u is the bonding orbital. Now look at this one, this is pi g. Uh, this is anti bonding orbital because blue and green, that's destructive interference. They have different phases over here. Blue and green, destructive interferences. You know, negative and positive, they cancel. All right, so actually there's a nodal surface in the middle. All right, this picture is not very good. They're supposed to put a node in the middle. All right, because the plus and the minus should completely cancel in the middle. All right, now get back to the center of the molecule here. You draw an arrow, you go from negative to negative. That's a G symmetry. Well, you can draw some other arrows from here to here. Well, plus to plus, it's a G symmetry. So pi g is the anti-bonding orbital. Pi u is the bonding orbital. So it's different from sigma. In sigma orbitals, sigma g is bonding. Sigma u is anti-bonding. Pi orbitals, pi u is bonding. Pi g is anti-bonding. All right, let's look at you know some other homonuclear diatomic molecules, B2C2, N2, O2, and F2. All right, it's actually a lot easier to look at O2 and F2 first because when the six p orbitals interact, there's a so-called sp mixing in boron two, carbon two, nitrogen two. So it kind of somehow messes up the MO diagram. 
In O2 and F2, F2 there's no SP mixing, so it's neat. Even the Malacca orbitals are almost symmetrical. Uh, what did I mean? That means symmetry and center here. So you have pi bonding, pi antibody. Sigma bonding, sigma antibody, right? Imagine there's a center here. Sigma bonding, sigma antibody. So it's surrounding the center here. What's the center? The center is actually just the energy of the atomic orbitals. The center here is just the energy of the atomic orbitals. So now look at O2 and F2 first. O2 and F2. O2. One oxygen has six valence electrons. Two in here. In the uh, 2s orbital. Four in here. In the 2b orbital. So first, let's look at the 2s orbitals. Two electrons here. Two electrons here. After they form sigma g and sigma u, you have two electrons here and two electrons here. So the bond order is zero. This doesn't count. All right, this doesn't count. No bond is formed between the two S electrons. All right, only because the number of bonding electrons cancel the number of anti-bonding electrons. Now let's look at the P electrons. Four electrons here, four electrons here. So first, the two P Z and two P Z is doing head-to-head -head interaction. They form a sigma bond. And then two P X, two P X, shoulder to shoulder, pi bond. 2by, 2by, pi bond. Now we can put six electrons here. We have two more. Well, we we'll have to put them in the anti-bonding pi orbitals. So again, there are two anti-bonding orbitals in the oxygen molecule. Six bonding electrons over here. Minus two, that's four. Four divided by two. Well, the bond order is two. We can explain the bond order of oxygen is two. How about fluorine? In fluorine, you have six valence electrons in here. Also, you have four valence electrons in this antibonding pi orbitals. Six minus four is two. Two divided by two is one. The bond order in fluorine two is one. So this is neat. There's no SP mixing. So now I'm going to explain you what's uh, SP mixing. It's all about symmetry as well. So the MOs with the same symmetry can interact with each other. Okay, so uh, even if they have different energies. So let's say there are two MOs. MOA and MOB. MOA and MOB have the same symmetry. MOA has higher energy than MOB. And after they interact, they will get MOC and MOD. So the MOD has even lower energy than B. MOC has even higher energy than MOA after A and B interact. So it's kind of strange. So let me give you uh, one uh, example. Analogy. Two person. All right, they are just two MOs, all right? They have the same symmetry. Uh, one person has uh, $100. The other person has $20. After they interact, okay, the $100 person becomes $110 person. The $20 person becomes the ten dollar person, all right. So the lower energy auto becomes even lower energy. The high energy auto becomes even higher energy. All right, enough about that. So I'm gonna just tell you, in B2 carbon two nitrogen two, there is some so-called sp mixing, but really it's this. It's this. You have this is sigma g right, and this is sigma g right. They have the same symmetry. So sigma g interact with this sigma g. So this one sigma g will be lowered. Okay, the poor person gets poorer. This two sigma g sits higher than one sigma g, so after interaction, it goes up. It goes up, it's shifted up. The rich person gets richer, all right? So now you have this two sigma g on top of this one pi u. Okay, this one sigma g is still lower than one sigma u, it's just even lower. So that's what is going on. And then this one sigma u may interact with this two sig sigma u. This one sigma u is lowered. And this two sigma u has even higher energy, okay? So look for the symmetry. So first, you look for g and u, okay? This one sigma g interact with this two sigma g. This one sigma u interact with this two sigma u. 
And also, you have not learned this yet. Sigma also indicates the type of the symmetry of the MO. So sigma and pi, they have different symmetries. All right, they have different symmetries. Therefore, sigma does not interact with pi. Sigma interacts with sigma. G interacts with G. Again, sigma interact with sigma. U interact with U. So again, after the interaction, this is lowered. This is elevated to here. Okay, very important. The order is changed. And this sigma U is lowered. Meanwhile, this sigma U is shifted up. However, just only one change makes a lot of difference. That's this two sigma G. Before mixing, SP mixing, it's lower than one pi U. After SP mixing, it's higher than one pi U. Now let's get back to the name. What is SP mixing? We're talking about the interaction between sigma G and sigma U. Sigma U and sigma U. What's SP mixing? Okay, this sigma G consists of S orbitals. This sigma G consists of B orbitals. That's why it's called SP mixing. All right, it's, it's SP mixing. Okay, when XP, SP mixing happens, this two sigma G has higher energy than one pi U. This two sigma G has higher energy than one pi U. All right. Uh, don't worry about these red lines. Personally, I dislike those red lines. The red lines make the graph a lot difficult to read. Well, they are correct, actually. They are correct. It's just, uh, well, it tells you this 2s orbital can interact with this 2z orbital. All right? And this s orbital can interact with this 2pz orbital. So there's a line here. There's another line here. All right? It just makes this uh, MO diagram a lot difficult a lot more difficult to read so I would just use this one without SP mixing and then I shift this one down I shift this one up I shift this one down I shift this one up done that's SP mixing all right that's the essence of the SP mixing well the details well this 2s indeed can form head-to-head -head interaction with this 2pz same here you know it's just too much uh, too many lines, too many lines. But now the change is here. The 2 sigma g now sits on top of 2 pi u. So what does that mean? That means when you put electrons in the MOs, make sure you put two here first, and then if you have two more, put them here. And then if you have two more, put them in the pi orbitals first. All right, before you put them into 2 sigma g. And then if you have four electrons, well, put them all in this pi orbital first. And then you go to 2 sigma g. So in boron 2, well, it's simple. In boron 2, there are only three valence electrons. So two here, two here, one here, one here. So this two and this two will go here and here. The bonding order is zero. Okay, you have two bonding electrons, two antibonding electrons. And then we don't care. The bond order is, is zero. And each boron has a p electron here and here. So put them in the pi orbitals. There are two degenerate pi orbitals with the same energy. Hunt's rule here. Hunt's rule tell you if you have two degenerate orbitals, you put one electron in each of the two orbitals to minimize the repulsion between the two electrons. All right, this is also called the correlation energy. The correlation energy tells you the motion of electrons correlates with each other, all right? So if one electron is here, well, the electron tend to be over there, okay? They don't like to occupy the same orbital, especially when you have two degenerate orbitals. Again, you have two guests. They hate each other. You put them into two different hotel rooms. You don't put them in the same room, right? Well, only if you have like four guests and you have only two rooms, and then you pair them up. All right, so that's boron, carbon-2. Uh, that's easier. You just put, uh, you know, two valence electrons in this uh, two pi orbitals. There are two of them, all right? Well, get back to boron. So when you have two electrons, each occupy one 
pi orbital, make sure they have the same spin. They have the same spin. All right, that's very important. I think that's uh, that's Hans rule. That's Hans rule. You maximize the spin to lower the uh, repulsion between electrons. And why is that? Well, it's called the exchange energy. When two electrons have the same spin, they can appear at the same position at the same time. All right, it sounds weird, but it can happen. That's a lot of repulsion. They, uh, there's also higher probability for two electrons with the same spin to get close to each other than two electrons with opposite spins. All right? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I said it backward. If you have two electrons with uh, two different spins, it's more likely for them to get close to each other. It's less likely for two alpha electrons to get close to each other. It's less likely to have two beta electrons to get close to each other. It's possible to, for one alpha and one beta electron to appear in the same position or very close to each other. So if everything else is the same, then the repulsion between an alpha electron and a beta electron is greater than the repulsion between two alpha electrons. All right, so that's why in boron 2, not only you need to have one electron occupy one uh, pi u orbital, but also they have to have the same spin to achieve the lowest energy ground state electron configuration. All right, carbon 2, that's easy. Four electrons in this uh, two pi orbitals. Nitrogen, it's easy. You put four electrons here, two electrons here. The bond order of nitrogen 2 is 3 because you have 6 bonding electrons here, you have 0 here. Don't worry about this. This just 2 here, 2 here, they cancel. All right, this is the uh, MO diagrams for all homonuclear diatomic molecules from lithium 2 to fluorine 2. So let's look at fluorine 2 first. Actually, it's easier. Sigma G, sigma U, they cancel, and then 2 sigma G, 2 sigma U. They're almost symmetrical with respect to the center. Pi U, Pi G, symmetrical with respect to the center. So the center here, you can imagine, is the energy of the 2p orbitals. And now you have 6 bonding electrons, 4 antibonding electrons. The difference is 2, the bond order is 1. Don't worry about this. Oxygen, don't worry about this. Okay, they cancel. And then you have six bonding electrons, you have two antibonding electrons. Well, the difference is four, the bono is two. And look, in oxygen two, there's two electrons. Each of them occupy one separate pi orbital. All right, and they both are alpha electrons. It's okay for them to both have beta electrons. Just by convention, people just use alpha electrons first. Nitrogen, really easy, you know, this are just the 1 sigma G and 1 sigma U, we don't care about them, 6 bonding electrons. Carbon 2, 4 bonding electrons in the 2 p orbitals. The bond order is 2. Boron 2, again, it's just like oxygen over here. The difference is, over here, this is pi bonding orbital. This is anti pi bonding orbital. This is pi U, this is pi G. But what's the same? They both have two electrons, one occupy a pi orbital, and they have the same spin. Beryllium 2, okay. Two bonding electrons, two antibonding electrons, the bond order is zero. There's no beryllium 2 in nature. Lithium 2, two bonding electrons, that's it. Lithium 2 has a bond order of one.